place. And believe it or not, I'm in the parking lot in the back seat of my car. So we'll see how this works. And if there is a lull or if my Wi-Fi or something kicks out, Nicole will pick right up. She'll be right in sync with me. Nicole and I have worked out something. So all should be uh, good. Um, might we start with a roll call first, just to make sure we have quorum and then we'll begin, if that's okay with you, Patrice. Absolutely. So first we have uh, Scott. Unmuting, there we go. I am here, thank you, Patrice. <laughs> also, Lila. Hi, present. <laughs> Nicole. Present. Crawford. Present. Ozzy. <clears throat> Present. Terry. I see you jumping on, Terry. We're doing roll call. I'll come back to you. You see your I'm, screen. I'm present. Oh, yeah. Okay, awesome. Mark Thomas. Present. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Joel. Present. Julius Van Hook. Present. Nakenya Allen. Present. Dr. Cole. Uh, Lenita is absent today. She um, would not be able to make it as well as Evan Decker. And I think that's everyone. Well, thank you very much, Patrice. Well, let's begin then. Good morning to all and welcome. We are the Community Advisory Board. We're known as CAB. We are a board that was established by the Community Corrections Partnership, and they are known as CCP. Let's now set the table for board members, and for those of you in the audience with some basic housekeeping items. For those in the public, please keep your participation on mute until called upon by raising your hand. For those of you on the phone, use star six to mute and star six again to unmute. We'll hear comments first on particular items from board members, and then from the public by raising your hand. Let's pause one brief moment and review our purpose, which is to advise CCP by assessing the implementation of the county reentry strategic plan. Some, but not all of our responsibilities are reviewing data on realignment outcomes, advising CCP on engagement strategies, offering recommendations for ongoing realignment planning, and encouraging outcomes that are consistent with the county's reentry strategic plan. Now let's move to today's agenda. We've already had our introductions might we now have introductions by staff members, including those representing county officials? Good morning, everyone. Patrice Guillory here from the Office of Reentry and Justice. I think Jill is on. I am. Sorry, and I'm also in another meeting, so I'm trying to do <laughs> double duty here. This is Jill Ray with the Office of Supervisor <laughs> Candace Anderson. And Elisa Robinson with the Office of Supervisor Diane Burgess. Good morning. Good morning. Is there anybody else? Um, I'm on a limited screen. Patrice, if you could assist me if there's anybody else that's a staff or a member of the staff of a county uh, board, et cetera. No, no other staff are here. All right then, for our members of the public, rather than introduce yourselves, that may be rather lengthy, 
kindly do so by using chat if you so desire. And we wish to thank the new uh, CAB members who are attending this meeting. Now let's move to general announcements. Are there any general announcements? Hi, this is Lila Blanchard, and I'd like to let folks know that Rubicon Programs is hiring. I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat our link to different positions. We are moving forward with some of the positions that I've uh, been lifting up in prior meetings, so that's great news, and I'll just go ahead and put the um, put our, our link in there for um, additional positions um, that are still open where we're still taking applications. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Lila. Anyone else? Yeah, hi, uh, this is Terry Dunn. Apologies that my camera's not working. Um, I just want to uh, announce that uh, today is my last meeting with the CAB. Uh, I'm gonna have to shift and help uh, my mom's increasing medical needs. So um, it's been an incredible year and I appreciate everybody's good work and um, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Is there anyone else with an announcement? Moving now to the next item on our agenda, is there any public comment on any item which is under our jurisdiction, but not on this particular agenda? Uh, Patrice, I don't see any. May we move to the next agenda item? Item number three. Would you please go to uh, pages four through eight, and that's attachment one. And we're now looking for the approval of our record of actions from our November 10th CAB meeting. Might we take a few seconds and let's make it a few because we do have a long agenda. And my assumption is you have looked at the uh, record of actions from our previous meeting. I think that completes it, Patrice. May we have a motion to approve the meeting? Uh, this, is, previous meet this is Nicole, our motion to approve the previous meeting. This May we Scott. have a second? Yeah, I'll I second, second it, Scott. Thank you. Is there any discussion from the board first? Was that Nicole um, with the motion and then Scott with the second? Right. Yes. Thank you. Is there any discussion from the public? Patrice, would you be kind enough to call the roll? Crawford? Aye. Lila? Aye. Scott? Aye. Ozzie? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Terry? Aye. Mark? Aye. 
Joe. I'm gonna abstain if possible. Julius. Aye. Nakinya. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We'll now move to item number four on the agenda. And item number four is feedback from our CAB survey. And um, might you put that up and maybe I'll just go through some of this briefly and we'll see um, how this works. Um, the first thing we asked is what was working? And to maybe summarize, we seem to be, uh, when I say B, we seem to be in fair shape, good shape, we've made progress. And I think our charge is to continue with, the, with our efforts. Um, outreach with community officials, a comment was made that seems to be working, ORJ support has been excellent, and we've made changes that appear to be working. Any comments on that first section about what's working before we move to the areas for improvement? And this is really the area that I think we need to really focus upon. Any comments on what's working? Let's move now to areas for improvement. You'll notice here, we started here with greater individual member participation. And that seems to have been a theme for us for quite a while. The next item, to assist new members in onboarding, we have taken some steps. I noticed that Michael Pitts is with us. We've initiated, uh, which we did this past summer, and we will be doing for the five people that were just uh, added to our board, where we kind of have what we call a cab chat. So we'll be doing that. There have been some other ideas about having a buddy system, as well as maybe uh, doing something for having mentors in addition uh, or along with our buddy system. Item number three here, you'll notice cab business model, labor intensive. There appears to be busy work and there's little residual benefit to anyone, including the CCP and reentry population. And I think this is something we may want to think about going into next year. Let's take a look at our business model. Are we working for the sake of working? And we're really not accomplishing certain things in certain areas. So I think we should highlight that. Again, you'll notice here what's not working or needs improvement attendance at our general and standing committee meetings. This is so important. In order to get our work done, we have to, to be here or be there. Recruitment. I know we've been working hard, but we can always, always improve in this area. We will start the coming year with a full board. However, we will not have our alternate slates. Any comments in this area before we move to the next area? The next area, additional feedback, what's not working? And item number one here, stronger efforts on the ADA clientele. Second item, CCP should be bringing the AB 109 issues and initiatives to CAB for review and feedback, not the reverse. I think we need to really chew on that a little bit because you know we're, we're basically an advisory board. We're not experts in this area. So maybe we need to have discussions with CCP proposed to them, but maybe this is a, another approach. Also, there was a comment made here about an independent consultant. And this individual who made this comment felt that a consultant should be assigned to this particular relationship to facilitate our business at hand. And um, I, I think that is important. And maybe Patrice down the line, you could comment there when we're finished with this section. 
And we also talked about our marketing flyer, how we need to improve um, our marketing. And they also came back and talked about our business model. And they also made item number five here, CAB has made improvements. And uh, yes, I know we've made improvements, but we still have a long road uh, you know, uh, to cover. And a comment was made here about having an opportunity to share comments in a venue other than a public forum. And then finally, and I think this may have been one of my comments, are we asking too much of our board members from a time commitment? So we should do a little soul searching there. Uh, before we move to the next area, are there any comments in this section regarding additional feedback slash what's not working for us? Any comments? Okay, this is easy so far today. Let's go to general comments. Basically anything else, accolades were given to our ORJ staff. We thank you, Patrice and Monique, Denise, et cetera, for all the assistance each of you have been able to provide. Other comments, we're back again, our business model. Somebody said they would rate it as a C minus. Again, we need to take a look at our model. What are we doing? How are we doing it? A comment was made here about meeting less frequently, but with greater purpose. Again, are we asking too much? Are we meeting appropriately? These are some questions we might wanna ask ourselves. And another individual mentioned about expertise and indicated that his or her expertise uh, may not have been fully used. And then we have talked about item number five here. And this, I think, is something that we should really, really, uh, what is it, take a deep breath. The individual said, I would be hard pressed to recommend this to anyone who is looking for an effective use of their time. So, wow. Um, we need to really process that particular comment. And finally, and we'll end on a positive note, super job this year from Cam. So, whoo, I got to take a deep breath here. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke. Well, uh, literally, this is, this is truth serum, all of these comments. And whether you agree or disagree with them, that's not the point. The point is we have kind of, kind of our marching orders going forward next year for each of our standing committees, as well as CAB as a whole. We need to look in the mirror. We've got to look at ourselves, and we have to be critical in a positive sense to say, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? But more important, how do we get on a better path? Are there any more comments? Uh, Patrice, I can't see uh, the screen from where I am. Are there any more comments? Has, any, has anyone raised their hand? I don't see any raised hands, but I would like to offer a comment. Oh, I'll let uh, Scott Parsons, he has his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to um, be as transparent as possible. I'm probably the one responsible for some of the strongest compliments and some of the strongest um, detractions from our, our current business model and structure. Um, and I, I want to make sure in the spirit of our conversation on this, I am, you know, Monique, Patrice, both, you, you've done an excellent job as um, Nicole Popsick did as well. Um, I am really impressed with the department heads that uh, and leaders within um, the county system that make up the CCP. I think since when I've been with the county, um, there's some there's some improvements. And um, I'll take one in particular, our public defender, who I just think um, her efforts to work with law enforcement is is superb. 
Um, but I do, I am also the person and I'm willing to field and comment further on the fact that I feel that there's a lot of calisthenics here, um, but little time playing on the field in a sense. So uh, anyway, I'll end it there and Patrice give you the floor. Thank you, Scott. Well, before I give any further comments, were there any other CAP members that wanted to speak at this time? This is Nicole. I will. I um I would say that I'm very excited to see. Um, I am very excited to see these results and the feedback. Um, you know, being is going to my second year, going into my third. You know, when you first start, you feel like is it just me, but um. I really like the ideas of mentorship, us working together. Um, I know that we've all we're we've been talking about new ideas for the new members that are coming next year, and I, I'm really, um, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to improve in those areas. Um, this committee is really great and has a lot of work to do. I really stand by it, and I just think those ideas that are being put out there will even have more stronger for others to come in. So. Um, I just want to put that out there that I think this is um, awesome feedback, especially for conversations that we've all had, Crawford, about how we want to do next year. Um, and it'll give us that little platform of changes or things that we want to implement to make it better. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. Crawford, Crawford, I see Lila's hand is up. Yes, Lila. Yes, I wanted to um, thank Crawford and the CAB for putting out this survey. I feel like this might have been the first year that I've participated in a survey like this. And, um, you know, Crawford also implemented, um, you know, calling folks and checking in throughout the, um, the CAB year, which was a new development for us. And I just really want to lift you up, Crawford, for your customer service focus on all the members in the board. And um, this is a great improvement to me that we're having this um, survey here. So thank you. And thank you to the ORJ for supporting. Um, just a couple small things um, from this report that stood out to me. Um, you know, there was a comment in there from me um, that, that intimated that this is my last, um, you know, meeting on the CAB board. And so I did want to, you know, thank you all and thank Terry, especially who's also, um, you know, moving on from the board. And I also um, saw that, you know, we were lifting up, you know, the memory of, you know, some of the CAB folks who um, are no longer with us. Um, you know, I saw Dr. Hernandez's name um, listed here and also Dale's. Um, so I want to um, just, yeah, remember them one more time and acknowledge, you know, their contributions and um, really thank this board as well for, you know, continuing to move forward, um, you know, with, um, that very difficult, um, you know, loss that that we um, experienced all together this year. So, I I do feel like I'm going out on a high note, and I just want to thank everyone and um, applaud the progress, and know that it will continue to progress in in a forward way and space. And I thank everyone for all their comments and this process. Thank you, Lila. Uh, is, there, is there anybody else there, Patrice, but prior to your comments? No, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, but I would like to, oh, there's a comment um, um, from Julius here um, in, the, in the chat. Um, I, I would like to say, first of all, I really appreciate the um, the the um, comments of acknowledgement of our staff. I sincere, sincerely appreciate that we do put in a, a lot of work um, to support our, our advisory bodies that um, we are assigned to staff. And um, I know we're being recorded, so I probably shouldn't say this, but by far CAP is probably one of our favorites. Um, <laughs> and it's because- well, Say that already, again, please. Would you please no, say that again? <laughs> recording caught it. Um, but um, only to say that because you guys bring such um, energy and such diversity of perspective and thought and uh, of experiences. And so we really are impressed by um, the knowledge base that is on this board. 
I would also just rem remind you all, as um, as I do echo um, Julius's um, comments about being receptive to the criticism that in also in balance with that is to also give you guys uh, be open to giving yourselves grace and that you're often going through a learning curve. There is a lot that is being discussed and combed through really in a short amount of time. When you think about 12 months, in some cases, it's really just 10 months because you're so busy trying to just get things in order. Um, there's a lot happening. And so, um, but we are certainly open, um, ORJ staff at least, we're certainly open to revisit um, the structure of, um, of the meeting schedules, things like that. How can we condense or consolidate work where it would be um, more effective or efficient um, for the body? We're totally open to any suggestions that you all might have um, to best support you and, and what it is you're hoping um, to get accomplished as um, throughout your term as members of the CAP. Patrice, thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments? This is our truth serum yes. time today. <laughs> yes, could we have those? <laughs> yes, uh, Crawford, I would like to, to say something in reference to um, my experiences and my really um, gratitude for being a part of this board. Uh, I, I often say CAB is where I, I'm cutting my teeth as an, as an advocate for marginalized communities, those communities that I represent. I was able to come in a newbie and progress and get my wings where I can fly now. And I've had a great number of mentors who have assisted and aided me in my development while I've been here. This is my second year on CAB. I've been able to go in places that I was really afraid to go, but I had the courage because in spite of being the only person in the places, I knew that behind me, I had a team that supported me. And I appreciate the efforts of ORJ because they've always been there. The first year was really cumbersome, but the second year when things started to feel a little more normal, when I gained a little more confidence, when I was able to articulate what it was that I felt and able to really understand some of the things that were being presented and getting really vested and involved in the communities and the programs that we as CAB members are representing and really understanding the, the flow of our commitment and what that involves. And it takes a moment, but I was encouraged and I continue to encourage others. There's no respect, there's a, a respect of all persons. And as said earlier, we are diverse, but a united uh, team. And it takes that team in, in order to manifest the things that we are striving for within our structure. And I'm very proud to be a part. And I think for me, this is a great investment of my time. And I will continue to support CAB and the CCP and all of the things that we stand for as a community united. Wow, thank you, Ozzy. Are there any other comments before we move to the next item? Do you see any there on your screen, uh, Patrice? Uh, again, I have got limited screen use and I noticed my battery's going down. So Nicole, uh -oh. you better be in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> No, no other hands have been raised. Okay. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> okay, good. I'd like to make one final comment. I noticed, and I can't see on my screen, Michael Pitts. Uh, Michael Pitts was our previous chair. And yes, Michael, I just checked you are still with us. Um, I think we owe a lot to Michael Pitts for sharing his frustrations setting the stage to at least lead us to where we are now. Because he had frustrations, he worked like the Dickens, and by George, hopefully, many of us have picked up the baton and we're moving that forward. So, uh, Michael, thank you.
we're moving forward. Any other comments before we move to the next agenda item? The next agenda item, item number five, is briefly, let's talk about the makeup of, of CAB and our membership going forward. If you'll go to attachment three, page 13, you'll see um, the addition of Evan Decker and our four new candidates. Evan was introduced in November and then Latanya, Raina, Arena, Brenda, Justin Van Zerber, they were introduced in December. And here's what's interesting. Note our new distribution where we will be highly, and I wanna highlight the term highly, <laughs> leveraged to West County with six representatives. East County, four representatives and Central County, only two now. Our upcoming efforts will now shift to Central County for our alternate members. This is an intriguing turnaround or turn of events based on past difficulties with getting, re, uh, getting uh, members from West County. So those of you from West County, I tip my hat to you and thank you so very, very much. Are there any comments on this agenda item? Moving forward then. The only, oh, Crawford is Patrice here. The only comment um, I'd like to add is that we can certainly work with uh, Supervisor Anderson's office since we have Jill on and um, we can also reach out to Supervisor Glover. Uh, between the two of them, their districts sort of overlap in the central area. And um, we can certainly get information out to them to pass along via their newsletters um, to start some recruitment um, for those uh, vacant seats whenever, whenever you all are ready. Excellent. Patrice, yeah. at, at, actually District 4 also encompasses Central County. Okay. Yes, you're uh, right. Uh, Supervisor Glover just has uh, Martinez. But District 4 uh, will be the uh, Supervisor-elect Ken Carlson. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Most that's right. Central County, and he's actually keeping the staff. So you could probably reach out to the staff and and okay. move that forward as well. Okay. And then I saw Lisa. You you were had your hand up, and then it went down. I was going to say the same thing as Jill. That okay. um, our incoming supervisor um, Carlson will be a good resource. Yes. Cool. Thank you both. Yeah. Excellent. Are there any other comments before we move to item number six? Hearing none, Scott Parsons, you're on. Your time, sir. Okay. Well, I be, before I talk about the ambassador meeting, I just want you to know um, you introduced yourself as presenting from the back seat of your car. <laughs> so if the local if the local police get a call about a guy sitting talking to himself in the back seat of his car, I will serve as a reference for you. <laughs> uh, oh. Anyway, um, so the ambassador program, you know, I'm in possession here as a um, from the um, agenda in a few of our meetings, and we we've what completed one with the courts. Um, and that was an effective one. Crawford and I were uh, able to do that one with Matt Malone. And though Matt was not highly familiar with us, um, he was very appreciative to learning about our um, mission and our mission capability and um, certainly stood as a person that would uh, support us in the future to the degree that you can running the courts because they're limited in how they can take a position on certain matters. Um, we also, I see Supervisor Burgess uh, had a visit from CAB members and um, that was an interesting read. 
And I don't know, did you want to comment to the two that you um, were involved in, Crawford? Uh, yes, I was involved with uh, Supervisor Burgess, and I believe Nicole, uh, my my wing lady over here. Uh, okay. It was it was a, a a very good meeting, and as usual, because I had the pleasure of talking to Supervisor Burgess last year with uh, Jante. Um, boy, I just think we've got so much to learn, and in, in determining our agenda as to what's needed by talking to these uh, supervisors and to various people. Uh, it was thoroughly enjoyable. Nicole, might you comment? Um, yes, I definitely really enjoyed um, the conversation. I enjoyed her feedback. It was fun uh, yeah. to have this conversation <laughs> with her. Um, the key thing that stuck with me um, that she said is, you know, always try, it's okay to fail. And if you fail, start again. So she was really pushing for us mm -hmm. to come up with new ideas and present it. And I've never had anyone tell me that so I personally enjoyed the conversation and it was also feedback for cap so um I left with a smile on my face and laughed so it was really great amen uh, uh Jill uh, do you have a comment I just wanted to let you all know that her last name is pronounced Burgess with a hard g <laughs> <laughs> she cl corrects people all the time so we want to make sure she's really careful about making sure she she pronounces names correctly, so it's Burgess. Well, I'll tell you, Jill, she was really nice uh, and made us laugh. So, yes, she does correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she made us feel really welcome. Okay, so it was awesome. You, <laughs> so, well, the, those are excellent. Um, that feedback is really beneficial. And, and, you know, I wasn't sure in the beginning what an ambassador program looked like or a meeting. But just from the two that I was involved in and then hearing the spirit of, of your two, Crawford, um, means a lot. And I can conclude as far as submitted reports, um, the supervisor, Candace Anderson, S-E-N, not S-O-N, because I know Jill will correct me if I <laughs> get it wrong, because <laughs> I did get it wrong once. Um, and of course, our meeting also included Jill. Um, I was just thoroughly impressed um, with Supervisor Anderson's leadership, experience, knowledge of the subject, um, her commitment to it, and her connection to key people. Um, she certainly has not been sitting on her laurels. She has been reaching out and learning and connecting with people involved in our mission. And um, that was uh, impressive. Um, and I, you know, she comes with experience as a prosecutor. So it's not like uh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She has been in the midst of it for many, many years. Um, I'll be at Hawaii uh, instead of here. Um, so uh, that was beneficial. And of course, she extended um, her support to us in any way that, that she could. And um, I think too, Jill, your, uh, you know, kudo here is you make a point of being a part of all these meetings and, and participating. And I think that's helped our supervisor to be informed of course, and so thank you for that. Um, so the only thing that is kind of recognizable, Crawford, and I didn't know how you wanted me to roll on this, um, is we still have some reports that haven't been submitted yet, and we may have had some meetings that haven't occurred yet. And I don't know if you wanted to review that offline or so if, if, if I can interject, um, I, I believe there have been a few meetings have happened or at least folks that are on can give update verbal updates at, at the very least of uh, uh, the status of um, meetings if they had them already or if things have had have changed. Um, but I do see a, a few hands up. We have Lila, Jill and Terry. Oh, good. Well, I'll let you. Um, you call those because you can see more than I can probably. Right. All right, Lila. So um, uh, Reverend Julius and I were able to meet with 
um, supervisor John Joya in October, and it was an incredibly encouraging meeting like folks are describing so far. Um, and, you know, he, he did encourage us as well to continue to communicate directly with his office on um, recommendations um, so that um, they can continue to advocate for those and you know have alignment with them and he also encouraged the cab to be honest and thorough in our recommendations about budget transparency and to not shy away from being bold in our advocacy role so um yeah the more we can hear that and feel that and move into that on the cab i think um the, the more the merrier with that type of encouragement um and he just underscored um, the Office of Racial Justice Oversight that he and Supervisor Glover had been working to establish and you know the hope that um, the CAB and the work from that um, board will really um, work together um, and be moving in the same direction um, in many ways. Um, so that is a quick report from our meeting with uh, Supervisor John Joya. Um, Reverend Julius, is there anything else you want to add from that? If not, I'll give a go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Lila. That was, um, you basically summed everything up. I did just want to highlight again the encouragement um, for community, the encouragement for us to be in, commun uh, be in community with, with him um, and to um, be bold. And, and we definitely did receive that. Uh, and he he was kind. Uh, he he made um, some from, you know comments about familial ties um, that we have from us being long to long time uh, West County residents, and so it was good to actually um, feel a sense of community um, in a situation like this. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Van Hook. And he also did mention that he will be on the CCP the next year, so he's um, you know someone that will continue on that board. And then um, super exciting, Lenita and I have our um, second ambassador meeting, which was rescheduled after getting scheduled late um, with EHSD tomorrow. So we'll send that report um, once that happens. Um, and yes, we did, um, you know, complete the meeting with John Joya on um, October 5th. Thank you so much. I'll put my hand down. I think Terry Dunn was next. He has his well, hand. Jill, actually, it was Jill, Jill first, Jill's then next. Terry, then Nicole. Mm -hmm. Hi there. So um, one thing that, Lila, you just said that John Joy is going to be on the CCP next year. Did you mean the Public Protection Committee, the PPC? Let me check my notes real quick. They're right here. Um, yeah, there's no supervisor on the CCP. You're so absolutely you're probably, right. The CPC. Sorry about that. Right. And just so you know, that hasn't been introduced to the public yet. That hasn't been introduced to the supervisor. So that's uh, news today that <laughs> um, he's going to appoint himself to that. So um, good to know. Anyway, the, um, the ambassador uh, notes on Supervisor Anderson, I just have a couple of edits that I would appreciate being added. Um, the first one is in the first bullet point. It lists me as an administrative assistant. And my um, title's actually field representative. So um, if that could be corrected. And then um, Anderson is a couple times in bullet point two and bullet point four is spelled O-N instead of E-N. So if those edits could be done, I'd appreciate it. And that's, that's all my comments. I think Terry Dunn is up, uh, Patrice. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Here. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, so as far as uh, ambassador visits uh, for me, I emailed uh, two folks at the CAO and uh, did not get any reply. And um, each time I was planning to call them, frankly, something just came up. So, um, so I have not been able to complete that to get that scheduled. Um, Supervisor Mitchoff's uh, office staff was very uh, helpful but Supervisor Mitchoff was also very clear that uh, her term is ending this month and, and she felt it was better uh, for the meeting to happen with her successor, uh, Supervisor-elect Ken Carlson. 
So the staff is willing to schedule a January meeting. They have his calendar, uh, but I won't be on cab at that point. So, uh, Terry, would you be kind enough to share that information with us and uh, we'll make sure that meeting uh, occurs with Supervisor Carlson. How's okay. That? Thank you so much, Terry. Forward that. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, next up is Nicole. Uh, yes, I would like to give an update from uh, Joel's and Joel and I call. Um, I'm going to pronounce his last name completely wrong because I can't get it right. We had a call with Mark. Is it Basto? Bastolis? I'm going to say it wrong. Um, it was a, um, it's, I didn't see it in there. I think Monique was waiting for something, but I did send it over to her. I didn't, I was looking through the agenda too. <laughs> I didn't see it. Um, I don't say his name right. What department? Which, which apartment? The sheriff's. Oh, sheriff. Mark, last name B U S T I L L O S. He helped me say it a few times, but. <laughs> But I mean, he was really friendly. It was really nice. Um, I'll let Joe pipe in as well. But um, the reason why I wanted to bring him up is because I love the feedback that he gave. He talked about, um, you know, the experience of of COVID. Um, he talked about Tay and well, not just Tay in general, but he talked about how he wished that there was a way to catch individuals when they're younger to prevent them from going, you know, going into um, a long life of incarceration and the outcomes afterwards. Um one of the key things that did he, that did stick out to me was he talked about um I'm trying to find it in my notes sorry you all a A3 program that's coming up but he he talked about one of our recommendations and ref are one of the things that we brought up about staffing uh, we've heard it a lot about clinicians and the need within the county and that's also something that they see um they discussed a program A3 program that's going to open up um for individuals that have mental health um or need um, immediate assistance, but the, the issue that they're running into is um, staffing. So it's going to be an outpatient drop in mental health services. And that's one of the things that CAP that we're looking at and that we're focusing on as well. So it was really nice to um, have that conversation, but it just really stuck out um, the different, everything that he talked about was on point with our recommendations, that the need for housing, um, how they're noticing the difference in the, um, the homeless encampments, um, the need for uh, more permanent supportive housing for the reentry population and focusing on that uh, mental health. And those are key things that uh, as CAP, we're talking about as well um, to see um, different changes um, coming in as well. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, he was really nice. Um, we had a few labs and things like that. So it was a great conversation to have and to hear their insights. And Joel, if there's anything that I missed that you may want to highlight, um, no, no, I think so. you were perfect, but I wanted to thank you because you were a great leader. Um, it was my first time, so you made things easy for me. Um, he also was a, a great as well, agreed with most of our recommendations, so it was a great learning experience for me. Um, yeah, and I, hopefully I'm ready for the next one in the future. Thank you, and I'm going to piggyback off of you and tap my hat off to Crawford <laughs> because it was my first time leading, and he mentored me, so... <laughs> I just want to say this is an example of what we're saying, mentoring and helping each other. So thank you, Joel. I appreciate that comment. So I see another hand up. Mark, were you wanting to comment? Oh, yes. Um, since I've seen people giving a little update, um, I was I had a meeting with the public defender being an ambassador with the uh, public defender on Monday. Um, I did it by myself because uh, the partner I was matched up with, um, you know, she had to drop out of cab. Um, so I went ahead and did the meeting. So it was very effective. They're, they're very active in trying to have early intervention. Um, they've been doing it from 2006. They've been funded with AB 109, for instance, they have a lot of um, early representation going on. They've developed a holistic intervention partnership. I oh, actually have millions of dollars to work with. They got a grant. They do a lot of front end access. So they develop these teams of staff members that are, that it's kind of like a pilot thing, but they go out and deal with people and help people early on in the system. She also is interested in a post-conviction um, unit to do it once people have already been convicted. So, and they do clean slate. So they have a lot of um, things going on. 
I did ask her of, of all the different types and in, inequities we have, like of race and gender and having a disability and income, which did she think was still the biggest inequity? And she said race, you know, and she thinks there's a need for more IEPs um, in schools. So those are just some of the things. She's very enthu enthusiastic and energized uh, to get all this stuff done. So it was a very positive meeting. And um, I was, I did become assigned to do the sheriff's department, meet with the sheriff, haven't heard from them <laughs> back. So um, I haven't been able to contact the, the sheriff or his ass assistant. Anyway, it's a quick report. I'm writing it up. Mark, it. would you be kind enough to indicate the person you contacted at the sheriff's department? Maybe we can reach out to them with you or reach back out to them again. Okay, it was right in the, the um, program we have. Um, I got it right off there. It, um, I'll look it up, but it's in the um, cab ambassador's guide. Okay, if you could either text it or just send a quick email, then okay. I'll get with Patrice and we'll, we'll follow up with that. Okay. I think it was um, Assistant Sheriff Simpkins, was that no, the name? That was a woman's name that's given as the staff. Remember, there's a chart. Probably and, Jody. Yeah. It's probably yeah. Jody Sinkanita. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But what I was thinking, he might be a good person to um, have the meeting with because he's probably more accessible <laughs> right now. Um, Steve. Yeah, actually, I would I I would recommend reaching out to both Jody and um, Assistant Sheriff uh, Simpkins. Um, the two of them actually work pretty closely together. So Jody is the director of the inmate welfare programs. Um, so um, she really has oversight of a lot of the in custody programming that's happening there. Um, so the, yeah, as I mentioned, the two of them kind of work closely uh, together. So outreach to both of them, I'm sure they'll they'll make time on their schedule to meet with you. Um, okay. And then Nicole, you mentioned that you met with someone from the sheriff's office. Did I get that right? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to see exactly. Um, I could be saying it wrong. Don't quote me, Patrice. I'm trying to, all I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have you assigned as LEA and that could be what they law for. So like a local- It was, department. yes, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. Do, you recall, yeah. do you recall which city? That may have been either, that may have been Conquered or- mm -hmm. It was Concord, I believe. Yeah, it, it was, was Concord. It was Concord. Okay. I'm just trying to find okay. my notes. I'm sorry, I was not prepared. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. All good. But I'll, I'll get, uh, so um, just a heads up to everyone, if you've had your meetings already, but you haven't had a chance to send in uh, your notes to us, please do so. Uh, what we try to do is put together a um, an executive summary, if you will, of some of the things that were discussed across all of these various meetings. Um, so at the very least, we could have something put together for, for the next year. So folks could have that. It could be a legacy document, especially for some of the new members coming on. I see your question, um, Justin. Yes, all members who are assigned to, um, to these ambassador meetings are, um, are prepared with some talking points. And that's usually developed um, between I forget which committee. <laughs> so many people's hands are touching it. So, but nonetheless, they're usually based off of um, the caps or set of priorities for uh, and, and recommendations uh, for that year. So we'll discuss all that likely around when we get to our um, retreat conversation. So um, Patrice, I don't really have anything else to, to add except for Lenita was with me on the Supervisor Anderson ambassador meeting and she did an excellent job. She was well prepared and, and engaged. Um, the other thing I noticed is that, um, and I don't know why spelling is such a big deal to me today, but Sheriff's Office, it's, it's one R and two Fs. And at the bottom of the document that you have on the screen there, it's you have it reversed. Somebody has it reversed. Thank I do you. know how to spell that. I may not know how to spell anything else, but. <laughs> so that concludes our report, unless someone else had something. 
Uh, Patrice, do you see any other hands? Uh, maybe we could move on to the next agenda item. No other hands, but I do really quickly want to acknowledge Terry has to jump off and this is his last meeting. And I'm sure everyone wants to give you a warm bye and thank you for your leadership over the last several months. Well, before, excuse me one second. Terry, you're leaving now? Terry, is uh, Terry uh, I still think with he may us? have already jumped off. I think he may have already jumped off. Yeah. Doggone it. Okay, because I had some comments for him and the other people at the end. Uh, that's all right then. Okay, no problem. Okay, where are we? Uh, are we ready to go to item number seven? Yes, discussing the retreat. Annual retreat. Mm -hmm. And maybe just some comments here. In the past two years, we've had two half days of three to four hours each. And we're currently working on that agenda. Um, some of you, I've reached out to some of you already. I've also been talking with uh, Patrice and we're putting, trying to put together an agenda that will reflect your needs and what you feel will be necessary. And if you have any input, please reach out to me uh, or to Patrice and um, we would be more than pleased to, you know, consider and to put on the agenda items that you think would be helpful as you transition uh, into your roles for next year. So those are just some brief comments. Now, Patrice, uh, can we talk about potential dates and how this may work in January of 2023, if we can pull this off? Sure, and if I could, before I jump into dates, just give a brief overview of what the uh, annual retreat is and what it what it has consisted of over the last several years, since we have a lot of oncoming members and also we had members that came on uh, mid-year that didn't get a chance to experience the annual retreat. So um, each year, um, CAB hosts, um, uh, essentially it's a new member orientation, um, but we call it an annual retreat. And it's a big overview of AB 109 public realignment um, here in the county and uh, the role that CAP plays in advising on the implementation um, of that legislation. So we use the two half days, as Crawford mentioned, um, to really just comb through uh, some of the documents that CAP has created in the past, some of the policy and budget recommendations uh, you all have made in the past. Uh, recruitment processes you, you've engaged in, um, as well as um, the structure of CAB and also the structure of the decision making that happens, right? Mm -hmm. Because CAB sits really uniquely compared to a lot of other advisory bodies in the county. You advise an advisory body <laughs> to the, to the um, board of supervisors, right? Um, and so you also, though, have a lot of um, of um, say it, it, essentially in terms of not authority. So don't like when I say a lot of say, please don't confuse those two things, but you certainly, your voices are definitely heard and respected with regards to budget allocations for community-based programs that the full community corrections partnership um, takes up um, and then makes the full recommendation to the board of supervisors. So we go through all of that over the course of two days. Um, it's also an opportunity for members to get to know one another. These are public meetings, so they're usually, there's an agenda that is posted, so other members of the public will likely attend. Um, and because the last few years uh, we've experienced COVID, um, these meetings have been virtual. Years prior to that, pre-COVID, um, they were in person, and in some cases may have been a little bit longer so that there's more room for um, breakouts and things of that nature. Obviously, we know having a long meeting virtually is really, really tough. Um, so anyway, that's just sort of a quick snapshot um, for all of you as to what the annual retreat is all about. In the past, we've had them scheduled in the February uh, meeting to give the January meeting an opportunity for our um, uh, officers of the full cab to be selected, and then um, we move on into uh, uh, planning 
for the February retreat, but we've heard from CAP members that we'd like to see that get pushed up so that there's more time for planning and execution of work. Um, so with that, I'll transition to, we can open it up for discussions about potential dates to schedule for next month um, for your annual retreat. Um, usually we would identify the CAB meeting date of that month, the general body meeting date, which for January would be, it's usually the second Thursday of every month, right from 10 to 12. So for January, that would be, um, oh, I don't have my calendar. I, I believe the 13th. It's the January, 12th. The 12th, thank you. Um, January 12th uh, would be your upcoming, um, your rarely scheduled general body meeting. Um, and you can either utilize that time as your retreat time, as well as pick a day either before or after. You can also split it up. You can give yourself a week in between, certainly leave it up to you all. You can also have your, your general body meeting to be able to just focus on officer elections and then schedule special meetings later that month um, for you all to have your retreat date. So let's say the 20th, fifth or 26th or something like that later in the month. So there's some variety there and we'll leave it up to or open it up for any suggestions from CAP members. Are there any suggestions on dates that we can hopefully uh, put this retreat together for you. Uh, for example, would an afternoon and morning be better or would you like two afternoons or two mornings? Uh, if you could give us some guidance, that may be helpful. I'm just looking, um, I think that January 11th, 12th looks real good on the calendar. So um, how you configured that really doesn't matter to me. I'm keeping those days kind of open since you suggested them. Thank you. Any other comments, um, particularly from new CAB members based on your schedules? We don't want to trample over your <laughs> over your schedule on the first one or two days that you join us. My schedule is pretty flexible that far out, Crawford. So happy to accommodate. Thank you. Mine is as well. I'm flexible as well. Great, great. Well, Patrice. If they don't like it, we'll blame it on you. If they like it, it was my idea. <laughs> I don't so know if I would like to go into the new year feeling that uh, pressure. <laughs> no. Okay, so Patrice, I guess you and I will get together and maybe we'll, we'll, and naturally we'll get together with our leadership team, with Lila and with Nicole, make sure that all of us are in sync and we'll come out with some dates and uh, hopefully that'll uh, meet the desires of current board members and incoming board members. How's that? And if I could quickly put a plug in for, because Lila is terming out, as you all know, uh, but for, and so my ask of her, as well as other members that are resigning, if you have the time, we, we usually leave space available in the agenda for sort of reflections from previous members. So if you would be so kind to think about possibly at least attending for that time slot so new members can have an opportunity to hear what it was like for you to be on CAP, much appreciated. Yeah. And one other thing, Patrice, we will again reach out to Michael Pitts. He doesn't have a choice, he's gotta be there. So whatever, <laughs> whatever his schedule is, he's gotta change it because he's gotta be there. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to give him a new title. Should he be ex officio for CAP? Is that what this is yeah. going to end up being? I, I was thinking about. Hey, yes. <laughs> hey, we'll refer to Michael as Chair Emeritus. There we go, Chair Emeritus. I love it. <laughs> okay. Can we move to the next agenda item? And to give you the, oh, wait a minute, can we move to the next agenda item on these various reports? 
All right, we will move now. Prior to doing that, Nicole, I got to give you the heads up because my battery is running out. So what I'll try to do is sign out here and sign in on my phone because I want to be available for the very end. Okay. So so if I happen to fade out, Nicole, Just jump in. please jump in. Will yes, you sir. Thank you very much. So let's move then to item number eight. We'll get started. I'll make some comments. And then after that, uh, we will, no, we don't have any comments. These are our reports from our standing committees. And I think our first one would be a report from the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Jill, would you be kind enough to assist us? I will step um, in first and then Jill can back me up and, and see if I miss anything. Okay. Um, so the big the big item uh, from our last Board of Supervisors meeting was the uh, change in our cannabis ordinance or changing our cannabis ordinance so that now you can uh, legally sell vaping products um, for, for cannabis, not for tobacco, but for cannabis alone. Is that right, Jill? Sounds somewhere near right? Um, yeah, go ahead and finish and then I will add in what I'm going to add in. Okay. And so this um, basically changes the ordinance so that uh, it was restricted. It was, it was not legal to sell uh, that sort of cannabis or vaporizers in cannabis retail markets in unincorporated Contra Costa County. Uh, and so that changes that rule. Thank you. And Jill, then, your comments, please. Yeah, so I would just um, like to add that that was um, introduced by Supervisor Burgess, and it was passed on a 3-2 vote. Supervisor Anderson and Supervisor Glover opposed it. It's for both the sale and delivery of cannabis vape products. And so, and then also the health services department um, did not support it. So um, there's a lot of work to be done to ensure that the education effort is rolled out into the community, but there's also some serious concern about um, the access for youth um, on that. So I just wanted to add that. And then also last night in a meeting, I heard that probation intends, um, they've announced the date that they intend on closure of the Orrin Allen Youth Rehabilitation Facility, and that will be on February 3rd. And um, planning is underway to slowly bring back the youth from the DJJ, um, the Department of Juvenile Justice, starting in March. They're hoping to trickle them back from the state and with a final deadline of July. And that, um, that matters to this group because when you say youth, those are, um, many of those youth are over 18. So they are the reentry population coming from a different department and different division, and yet all under the same um, probation umbrella. So something to think about as you're going forth and, and programming for transition age youth and that sort of thing. There's a whole um, support system that's being put in place for DJJ, and that will be rolling out more um, involving also transitional housing to the specific population. But it's just something to keep on the radar as you're planning going forward about the needs of that population as well. Next. Thank you very much, Jill. The next item, and I will then sign off after this and sign back on, will be the report from our CCP meeting. Uh, to begin here, we presented, uh, that is we, CAB, presented Evan Decker in November, and Brenda Lee, Rena Moore, Latanya Thompson, and Justin Zerber in December for appointment to our full CAB board. Based on the additions of these individuals, we should have a strong, strong foundation going forward. And I think we've got the muscle now to deal with many of the items that were listed on that survey for making us a better and more efficient organization. In addition, Nicole, Lila, and I also presented CAB's recommendations for the utilization of excess AB 109 funds. We trust some of the recommended agencies will consider increasing their incoming uh, budget requests. Our oral presentation was followed up with a written, with a written document, uh, which was forwarded to CCP and Paul Reyes. 
with that, I'm going to sign off. I'm in the red category here on my battery. Scott, would you pick it up as well as Nicole? I will try to get back in. Thank you. Sure. Okay, it looks like I'm next on the agenda with the PPC meeting. This is an easy report for me. The meeting was canceled. So um, there was no report to submit. Um, next in the list is the OCEC subcommittee uh, report. And most of that's self explanatory on what was produced and published here. Um, I guess the only comment that I have, unless somebody has questions for me on any of this, is, is we did submit, um, I submitted to Monique um, a draft and a report of accomplishments. And um, I haven't heard back yet, so I'm assuming that it either was okay or I will hear back if, if it wasn't. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Otherwise, uh, any questions for OCEC? That concludes my comments then. Okay, thank you, Scott. Um, moving on would be Lila for report out for programs and services subcommittee. Thank you, here I come. Um, so our programs and services subcommittee um, meeting was a wrap up to the year. So we shared items that we'll be um, submitting in our write up and report of our subcommittee's work for that year. Um, that was one of the main um, issues that we discussed. Um, I wanted to just go out of order just for a quick moment, if that's okay. Um, and Jill, and make sure that I understood what you were sharing um, for, out of the BOS meeting. Um, and then I'll come back to our um, report on programs and services. So at this point, um, where where will folks be, how, where will juveniles be housed, um, you know, once they're coming out of, of the two places that you mentioned? So the Orrin Allen Youth Rehabilitation Facility um, has nine youth in it right now. By the time February 3rd comes along, there will be two youth left who will transition to in-community programming. That's what's anticipated. Um, of course, the courts are the final deciders on that, but that's the plan. And um, then the Department of Juvenile Justice is the state, you know, just like they did with the prison system with 8109, transitions um, people back to the counties to take responsibility. Um, the Department of Juvenile Justice is transitioning those youth who would normally be um, housed at the state level back to the counties for responsibility. And there's a whole um, programming model that's been established and has started at Juvenile Hall. And they, they will be kept separate from the youth who are um, assigned to Juvenile Hall at the county level. So they will not mix together the two populations. Thank you so much, Jill. That helps me understand a little bit um, more about that um, important update and how it could impact us moving forward. Um, so other pieces on our, um, excuse me, on our programs and services subcommittee meeting were, um, we also provided ambassador meetings, um, up, updates there. Um, and we reviewed the uh, budget proposal recommendation script that, um, that Crawford mentioned, and we did hear that um, verbally with um, yeah, we shared that verbally with the um, CCP meeting and um, Crawford, I am wondering if this board will be able to see that the written recommendations um, that are kind of an addendum to our, um, you know, original six recommendations that we sent, if this group will be able to see that or has already seen that document that we provided to the CCP. Oh, and I'm uh, sorry. Can you Crawford, hear me? Off the call. Oh, you're back. There you are. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'll get with Patrice. We will follow up uh, on your suggestion. And by the way, Patrice acted quickly when we, uh, that is uh, after the written uh, document was put together with Lila, uh, Nicole, myself, she quickly reviewed it and did send it on to the county. So uh, uh, we just may have one more step, but I think we're in good shape. 
uh, Lila. Thank you so much, Crawford. And thank you again to you and Nicole for that presentation and to folks who submitted ideas, including uh, Terry on um, specifics on how additional funds uh, could be used um, in the reserves um, for AB 109. So the last thing that I'll add from our meeting is, um, gosh, you know what? I, um, I'll go ahead and sign off there. Um, I'm not quite as great with two screens as I am with one. So thanks everybody. Thank you, Lila. Um, I'm uh, the next uh, item, one thing, policy and budget. Oh. Uh, Crawford, one thing, if I if I can highlight for um, uh, programs and services, um, there was consensus to cancel the December meeting, so there will not be a programs and services meeting for the month of December. Thank you. Um, since I can't see the screen, uh, may I move to the next item here, which is report from the policy and budget, Patrice, or are there some other comments uh, to be made? No, uh, Nicole, you're up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick uh, do a um, um, recap on our meeting from January 16th. So uh, we reviewed, we did a motion with Ozzy. Um, well, um, um, Ozzy and Lila, of course, approved the minutes. We reviewed our budget and documents, which we presented to the CCP um, to prepare for that. So we reviewed um, as a committee of the script and the things that we we're going to talk about on that call. We discussed the end of year subcommittee report. Ideas were shared about collaboration um, with programs and services subcommittee and expanding connection to external bodies. Um, and um, we continue to monitor the spending of the AB 109 funds. Um, to see the need for the refined goal. We talked about performance-based monitoring. Um, not sure if the recommendations that we are making are being implemented. We talked about that and had a discussion. Um, and we also reviewed and discussed the evidence-based programs or projects um, uh, to continue on for next year. Um, another key thing that we talked about was disabilities, um, jobs, um, veterans, a diff adding different things onto our work plans or expanding the information on our work plans to be in more detail. Um, and we talked about the legacy points of Dr. Hernandez and Dale and making sure that they gave so much great insight and feedback to CAP that we want to make sure that we continue to work on those those items and elaborate and, and include those um, um, within our, our goals. Um, we talked about um, our consensus on our charter for the policy and budgets. There was no changes necessary in reference to our charter at all. We were okay with the way it was written. Um, we agreed to all cancel our December the 16th meeting. And we discussed a little bit about the cap retreat planning um, in December. And that's it. Wow. Well, thank you, Nicole. Any questions for Nicole? Uh, Patrice, uh, uh, I don't have a screen available. Are there any other hands, et cetera, or comments, or can we move to our next item? No hands are raised. Thank you. Our next item, this is going to be a humdinger, as they say, next steps. <laughs> How do we want to approach our next steps here, Patrice? Um, well, I think uh, we, we can certainly work offline to schedule next month's agenda, uh, which will be then I'm hearing um, uh, for that will be set aside for the annual retreat. Um, I know that a few of you have been having um, some discussions, so we'll need to start um, pulling that all together so we can notify folks in advance of when the actual scheduled date will be. Um, we can also um, on our end here at ORJ, make sure that everyone has updated calendar um, uh, invites and um, Zoom links and what have you for all future uh, CAB meetings and potentially uh, subcommittee meetings. I think that would be the bulk okay. of it. All right, then. Then that brings us then to the end here. And prior to adjourning for this year, in fact, I'd like to share some comments about our valued, and let me underline again, valued departing members who were so crucial 
in us making the strides that we made in 2022. And let's begin with Mark. Mark Mark was a member of our OCEC Standing Committee, an inspiration in overcoming, and I'll always remember, if your head's not right, nothing else will matter. So Mark, thank you. Thank you, sir. The next departing member, Dr. Cole, he was a member of our Policy and Budget Standing Committee. His sage advice was instrumental in our most recent survey of CAB members, and that was on our agenda today. His insightful approach to issues will be missed. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Cole. The other departing member is Kenya. She was a member of OCEC this year, but in her first year as a member of CAB, she took on the huge responsibility of chairing OCEC. Thank you always, McKenna, for speaking up. Without McKenna's voice regarding our ambassador program, we would not be where we are today with our ambassador toolkit. Thank you again, McKenna. Terry Dunn, he's no longer on the call, but a member of our Programs and Services Standing Committee and the Vice Chair. Thank you, Terry, for just being you. When I say that, I mean eager to assist and thoughtful approach and a thoughtful approach to problem solving. So thank you, thank you, Terry. And here we go, finally, ah, Lila. Lila, as you heard earlier, has termed out. She was the secretary of CAB, a member of your leadership team, member and chair of programs and services with the passing of Dale Harrington, and a consistent contributor to our policy and budget standing committee. Whew. This was one busy lady. I will truly miss her caring spirit. Hopefully someone will have to pick up the announcement gauntlet that she has championed over the years. Thank you, Lila. Thank you so very much. And with those comments, we respectfully adjourn to our next meeting. Well, you. Before, can we can we not adjourn yet, Crawford? Oh. Oh, go ahead. What would you? Well, yeah, I certainly want to open up the floor for if other members uh, wanted to speak, since we, we do still have time here. We're at, at 1123. Um, if there are other members uh, that like to also uh, give their remarks um, for our departing uh, members. I see Nicole. Okay. I, okay, one second. I will have to sign off now. I've got to uh, go. So um, I will have to listen to the audio portion, but thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, Crawford. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I enjoyed my time with um, Mark and Dr. Cole, and thank you for being a part of CAP. Um, I was smiling as he was talking about Nakenya, um, um, as well as um, Lila as well. Nakenya, I remember we started together. So I just um, enjoyed your time here. We both start at the same time and it was a pleasure to get to know you and work with you. Um, Alayla, I'm gonna talk to you outside of this, but I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> you kept me on my toes. Um, you always made sure that uh, we stayed in alignment with what we needed to do. And as being new to CAP, you were a big mentor and help for me. So I will really, 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 really miss you as part of this. And um, I know Terry is gone, but I love his personality. He was awesome. So I just wanted to say thank you all for your contributions to CAP and you will be missed. Thank you, Nicole. I just want to say that um, everybody's been doing it and doing it in a, a global pandemic. And so, you know, while this type of volunteer work takes commitment under regular circumstances, you know, we 
have been here and we've hung in, um, you know, with um, the extra challenge and the so many weights that we've all carried. And so I want to congratulate and thank all the folks who are finishing um, this year strong um, with the cab. So thank you. Um, it's great to see you and it's great to have been part of this together with you. And keep up the great work. <laughs>Okay, if I can um, take the liberty of jumping in here as well. Um, again, I, I can't echo enough uh, Crawford's remarks. I sincerely appreciate the leadership of all of you. Um, and especially Lila, I remember your first retreat, yeah, which was actually in person um, when you um, came on board um, on, onto CAB and your leadership has just grown leaps and bounds since then. And then shortly after we have the Kenya and Dr. Cole. And I mean, it just continued, the, the body just continued to strengthen over time. And I just really, you as well, Mark, you all brought so much insight and I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. I'm gonna always be the staff person to say, you though you're leaving on paper, don't leave. Continue to be <laughs> active and participatory as much as you can, um, because uh, not only just in being a, a veteran or alumni of CAP, but you're still a community voice that's well respected and, and certainly needed in a lot of these spaces. So thank you to all of you for what you've uh, what you've given to the CAP body, and I hope that your work will continue in, in other forms. And Mark also has his hand up. Oh, yeah. I just want to um, tell you to keep up the good work. Um, I'm not a, really leaving the community. I just have, um, like, I'm on the AVP California Steering Committee. I'm on a board for South African Criminal Justice, what they're doing for trying to stop femicide and violence against women in South Africa. So. I'm still working with a lot of things. It's just I had to narrow <laughs> narrow some things down. I'm planning on going to Kenya next year for a criminal justice thing they're having there. So I do AVP. That's the thing I've been doing for 30 years, and I do restorative practices. So if I can help anybody in any way, let me know. I might send out a flyer for you to attend one of our workshops. I'll try to get one done in my area. We did one in Fairfield a month ago. So, yeah, and I'm working with facilitators in Ukraine right now to help deal with what they're going through over there. So there's a lot of stuff to do, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still committed to this type of work. Thank you all. It's good to meet you all. It was a very good experience my last year. And I wanted to kind of piggyback off of that too. Um, thank you. This was my very first committee and I learned so much. And I am definitely not leaving this kind of work. Um, I will be looking into pursuing more opportunities, and I'm sure I will see you all again. So thank you for welcoming me to um, the cab. Thank you for helping me grow. And thank you for listening to my suggestions and benefiting off of what I had to offer. And I felt like I was able to benefit as well. So it's been a good experience. All right, with that, Madam Chair, you're welcome to take us Madam in Chair. another direction. Okay, well with that, um, then we can adjourn our meeting unless there's any other comments or anything from anyone. No? Well, I'll just say thank you, everyone, for joining. Happy holidays if I don't speak with you. And see you on our next call. Thank you. Bye.